Hey guys, today I want to talk about the way the B58 turbocharged engine achieves its power, which is principally due to the turbocharger. Firstly, I'll be giving a simple overview and then I'll be looking at the turbocharger in much greater detail. The B58 is a forced induction engine, meaning that compressed air, rather than atmospheric air, is delivered to the intake of its cylinders. This is accomplished via the turbocharger. So air comes in through the snorkel in front of the intake muffler, into the intake muffler box, through the paper air filter, and then into the intake pipe. The mass of the air going into the intake pipe is measured by the mass airflow sensor and reported to the ECU to calculate fuel requirements. The air then goes into the compressor section of the turbocharger, where at the exit of the compressor section, its pressure and temperature is increased, but its density is decreased. The charge air or boost then flows up the charge pipe, where its temperature and pressure is measured by these two separate sensors, then through the throttle body assembly and into the intercooler. Here at the intercooler, the temperature of the charge air is reduced by the intercooler, which is an air-to-water heat exchanger. The now cooler and denser high-pressure air goes into the cylinders, where fuel is injected via high-pressure fuel pump and ignited. The rapidly expanding gas forces the pistons inside the cylinders down, and the gas exits each cylinder through its two exhaust valves into the exhaust manifold. The exhaust manifold diverts the exhaust air into the turbocharger turbine section, where it spins the turbocharger's turbine. The turbine is connected to the turbocharger compressor impeller. So as long as the engine is running, the exhaust gases spin the turbocharger on their way out of the engine, and it is the turbocharger which compresses intake air before it goes into the cylinders. Finally, the exhaust gases then flow through the downpipe and the catalytic converter into the exhaust system and out of the car. So that's pretty much how it works with general temperature control, lubrication, and other ancillary systems not mentioned. Let's look at the turbocharger in closer detail. This is the exhaust manifold. It combines the air from the six cylinders into two separate ducts. These are the expansion compensation units. The expansion compensation units compensate for material expansion and contraction as a result of both low and high temperatures between the turbine housing and the exhaust manifold and safeguard tension-free connections. This is the turbine housing, which houses the turbine wheel. This is the exhaust from the turbine housing and the exhaust of the turbocharger with the air going into the downpipe or the catalytic converter. The wastegate valve controls how much cylinder exhaust air goes into the turbocharger turbine and how much bypasses the turbocharger turbine and flows directly into the catalytic converter. This is based on boost requirements. This is the compressor housing. This is where filtered air enters the compressor from the intake pipe. This is where the heated and high pressure air exits the compressor and enters the charge pipe. So let's look at the process we just described in more detail. We've just seen that exhaust gases from the six cylinders enter the exhaust manifold and on their way into the downpipe, spin the turbine wheel of the turbocharger. This means that a part of the kinetic energy of the exhaust gases is converted into the kinetic energy of the turbine. The gases simply flow around the turbine blades or turbine impeller on their way from the high pressure exhaust manifold into the low pressure atmosphere and exercise an aerodynamic force on the turbine due to the shape of the blades or the impeller and cause the turbine to spin. It can spin at hundreds of thousands of revolutions per minute and gets very hot. The turbine and centrifugal compressor impeller are linked by a drive shaft. Consequently, as they are linked, the kinetic energy of the turbine becomes also the kinetic energy of the centrifugal compressor impeller. As it spins, the centrifugal compressor impeller transfers that kinetic energy to the adjacent intake air, increasing its velocity. As velocity increases, the pressure decreases to keep the sum of potential energy, kinetic energy, and pressure constant. This is demonstrated by Bernoulli's famous equation. So the more energetic intake air is now at a lower pressure as it leaves the impeller. 
Leaving the impeller does not mean it has entered the charge pipe. In fact, at this stage, the air is still inside the compressor housing. Note that because of the air at the centrifugal compressor impeller is at lower pressure than ambient pressure, the centrifugal compressor impeller is therefore drawing in air from the surrounding atmosphere. Air is drawn in axially, accelerated to high velocity and then expelled in a radial direction. The turbocharger compressor housing acts as the diffuser and it is the diffuser section which slows down the higher energy air, increases its pressure and its temperature. Kinetic energy is therefore transformed by the diffuser into static pressure. Based on the ideal gas law, increasing the pressure and temperature means that the density decreases. So compared to the ambient air, we now have a higher pressure, higher temperature and lower density air. This high temperature, low density, i.e. low oxygen air, is not ideal for combustion. The function of the intercooler, therefore, is to reduce the high pressure air's temperature whilst keeping the pressure high. And it does this by transferring some of the heat energy into the water coolant. The water coolant then radiates this energy into the atmosphere via the intercooler radiator or heat exchanger. In any case, reducing the temperature of the high pressure intake air results in its density increasing and therefore the oxygen content increases. Therefore, after the intercooler, we have high pressure, higher density, lower temperature air entering the cylinders for combustion. Ultimately, what the turbocharger does is that it increases air pressure in order to force a larger mass of air into the cylinder while the valves are open and the presence of more air means more fuel can be added for any given air-fuel ratio. The resulting increased air and fuel levels for the turbocharged engine means more resulting power from a given displacement compared to a naturally aspirated engine of the same displacement. The cylinder compresses the air-fuel mixture, the spark plug ignites it, and the rapidly expanding gas pushes down on the piston. When the piston is almost at the bottom of the cylinder, the cylinder's two exhaust valves open and the gas's high pressure forces it out of the cylinder. If the engine were 100% efficient, the entire energy content of the fuel would go to moving the engine's or car's mechanical components. However, the engine is not 100% efficient. In fact, with its compression ratio of 11 to 1, the maximum theoretical efficiency it can reach is 57% in an ideal world. So the minimum fuel energy being lost through the exhaust is 43%. A tremendous amount of energy from the fuel is wasted in the exhaust gases. And as we've already seen, that energy still contained in the exhaust gases is partially recovered in a turbocharged engine by spinning the turbocharger turbine section. The exhaust turbocharger of the current B58TU engine, which is the latest generation higher power engine, is not similar to the existing B58 engine turbocharger. The exhaust manifold is integrated into the cylinder head. Due to the exhaust manifold integrated into the cylinder head, the exhaust manifold and exhaust turbocharger housing are no longer designed as a single component. This means that the exhaust turbocharger can be individually replaced. The charging pressure is still controlled by an electrical wastegate valve. That's it guys. As always, if you disagree with something I've said, please let me know in the comments below. Once again, thank you for watching and I hope this video was useful in some way.